Probably one of the most underutilized features of Affinity Designer is the vector brush. Now sometimes when you're trying to create something and you need a brush or you need an item that is going to be repeating, you can make it yourself and copy it over, over and over again. Or instead you could save yourself some time, make yourself a vector brush, paint it over, and you can always use that vector brush later on in future designs whenever you want. So today let's show you how to make one and it's actually a lot easier than you think. So let's just jump straight into this. Say you have a picture or a design like this. I don't want to see any comments about how bad this looks. Let, let's just roll with this, okay? So let's say you have a picture like this and what we want to create is a fence that is going to be designed from one side of the field to in front of the house to the other side. Now what we could do is grab a rectangle tool, make a rectangle, color it white, and then duplicate this across and then duplicate it again and again and we could make our fence and just kind of repeat it over and over again but one time consuming two to get it perfect is going to take a while and there's a lot of messing about and a lot of moving parts so instead we can make ourselves a vector brush now down the left hand toolbar here we've got the vector brush which when you click on it nothing really happens but if you go up to the brushes panel which if you don't have if you head over to view studio and brushes if you click it there then it'll pop up you can use any one of these brushes which when you paint you can make nice brush art but what's great with this different from a pixel brush or for example like a photoshop brush is if we grab the node tool we can actually change the path of this brush so you're never stuck with what you've painted and you can always change it kind of later on whether it's the color or another path i've put way too many points on this thing but you get the idea so how does that kind of tie in with what we want to do so if we're going to make our own brush what we need to do is first start off with a new document so head over to file and new and i'm going to make it a square so 600 pixels by 600 hit create now in here is what we're going to paint what our first brush is going to be like so I'm going to go for like a, a picket fence sort of look. So we're going to make a rectangle and on top of that put a triangle. Select them both. Change the color to something brownish, orange sort of color. We're going to duplicate this across to here. Duplicate it across to there. To do this perfectly you could align them so they're spaced out perfectly. It takes a bit of time but just for example purposes we'll just rush through this. Now what we want to do is with the side beams is we want to make sure that they cover from edge to edge of the artboard so that when it repeats it actually joins the edges to the next picture and then the next one and the next one otherwise if you have it so it's got a gap to the edge then when the brush paints it literally paints each individual fence shape or each individual picture separate so make sure whatever you're creating at least goes to the edge or further if you really wanted to and then we'll copy this one and we'll change this to be a slightly darker color just for niceness looking. So there's our basic looking fence. Now what we want to do is export this as a PNG. So head over to file and export. Head over to PNG and I've just made it again 600 by 600. Make it whatever size. The bigger you create it, the bigger the brush can be. And I'll show you that in a second. So head to export, save it somewhere. Now if we go back to our original document, which is this great picture of the house. If we go back up to the brushes, go to these, I think it's four lines or three lines. I'm going to have to get a magnifying glass one day and actually look at how many lines that is. Click on that and head down to new textured image brush. I was going to open a window to find the picture that you just created. So here it is, the classic untitled name. Hit open and nothing really happens. But if you scroll down on whatever tab you have open here, so right now I've got acrylics open, whichever one you open and you create that new brush right at the bottom will be your brush. But if we grab the vector brush tool and paint with this now, you can see that's kind of like not what we want, clearly not what we want. So if we right click on this brush, go to edit, and down here, you can see under body, we want it to repeat. Now you can see that's kind of the effect that we want to look for. Now here we can actually make the size of the brush bigger and smaller. 
Now this is where I was saying that if you create the document or when you create your brush, if you create it quite small, then this brush width will only go to a certain size, which you can see here. So it'll only go to about 90 pixels for me. Had I made it bigger, probably would go a lot bigger. So let's leave it at something like 54. Now we can change the variance of the size. So if we make this bigger and smaller, we can say, okay, well, depending on our pressure or velocity, now usually this is more useful for a drawing tablet, which if you want to check out my video about whether a drawing tablet is worth getting, head up into the video up there or there somewhere. It's, it's up there. So if we apply less pressure, then the fence will be smaller. The more pressure we apply, the bigger the fence will get. But seeing as we're not using a tablet, then it's going to be kind of useless. We'll just leave that at zero. And opacity, we can say whether, depending on how much pressure we put, how visible the fence will be as well. But again, no tablet, no point. Make sure that's on repeat and hit close. Now, when we select the vector brush tool and we paint, we get ourselves a nice little fence. How cool is that? Now, a little bit of a warning, depending on how you draw this, you may get some odd little artifacts. So if I drew this fence like this, which clearly you're never gonna see a fence like that, but you can see how these ones over here are kind of misshapen slightly. And again, down here, you got them quite misshapen. So for something like a fence, you're not wanting to draw it like that. You wanna have more of a smooth motion of where it's gonna be. But also with the no tool now, we can bend this and decide where we want to put it here we want to bring this further down like that but not only that another way you can add this in is if we use the pen tool and draw a path which let's say we're going to do that once we've drawn it if we head down to the our brush again and just click the brush it'll just get pasted on now usually it's pasted on with the color that you have selected somewhere or just with a nice gray color but if you want it with your color that you created the brush with, use the vector brush tool. And another thing to note is with something like a fence that we've made, we want to always paint from left to right, because as you can see, the points of the fence are at the top. Whereas if we paint right to left, the points point downwards, which for a fence we can't do. But if you've got a brush which is symmetrical from top to bottom, you can kind of paint that however you like, basically go nuts. But for this, I'm having to definitely paint left to right. And another great feature about using these vector brushes is now we can also add effects to this. So if we go into the effects panel down here and having this middle one selected, we can add something like an outer shadow, which we can offset downwards if we like, or more importantly, an inner shadow to make it look a little bit more lifelike. or even an outer glow, we can even make it 3D, which doesn't look that nice. But the point being is that we can actually add effects to this as well. So the ability to edit this and make it a different shape or using a different path is super useful because as long as you don't cause any weird artifacts like that, you're gonna have the unlimited ability to re-edit this over and over again if you feel mm, it's not quite right, let's do it again. But you can experiment with this and make a bunch of different designs. I've seen people make roads, which are going to be repeating train tracks. Anything that's going to be a repeated pattern is super useful to have a vector brush for, because especially as soon as I close Affinity Designer, this brush is going to save right there. And I can always jump back into it and make some edits. So if I start using a tablet, then I can say, you know what, I'm going to make this a lot smaller. And then maybe when I paint it, I'm going to paint it from outside this little hill here, press really lightly on the tablet and then draw a lot harder going forwards. And it'll make a tiny, tiny fence in the distance there. And then a much bigger one coming across the front of the house. So you can add a bit more variety there as well. Add a bit of perspective. So it's well worth experimenting with. But that's it. That's how you make a vector brush in Affinity Designer. So I hope this information has been helpful. And if you have any questions, make sure you drop them in the comments below. And if you do make your own brush, tag me on the social media. All those links are in the description as well. 
And while you're down there, make sure you give this video a thumbs up, subscribe for more videos like this coming in the future. And until next time, I've been Brown Bear. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one.